over here going to get the pressure washer this is all the equipment from Russ Johnson at Southside Equipment in Kentucky you just email him he'll send you a part list just tell him you want to build a Predator 870 pressure washer so what you gotta do first is that you gotta mount this bracket to the water pump Russ applies these bolts the pump comes with its own as well those are gonna be a uh, hex cap 8 millimeter Allen or if you have the sockets to do it <laughs> these here are 17 millimeter their thread is M10 dash 1.25 millimeter by 20 millimeter long I used from the factory the locking washer I had resistance in bolting these by hand with this plate I don't know if the plate's just slightly off but if you use a little ratchet wrench there it'll move easily you won't be too scared about uh, stripping the threads just make sure you start it off by hand as much as possible and then just try with the ratcheting wrench if it doesn't really bind up then you should be good I know it does gum up the threads a little bit but it matches up with the factory L brackets These are the ones that come from the factory. They're 8.8 .8 grade, so are the ones that Russ gives you. Same thread. Just a heads up. It's a 17 millimeter to remove the oil drain plug. I got one of these extended drain hoses from powerwash.com in Fort Worth. They're made in uh, Florida, but they uh, you have to buy them from the power wash store in Fort Worth. So anyways, once you get the bracket in, and uh, I use medium grade Loctite, or Permatex is what I have, you can put the bolt these are 3 8 16 by 1 inch. It's a bolt washer, and on the underside, it's another washer and a locking nut. I had put the pump on, and then I wiggled the, the bolts in place on both sides over here. Here they're exposed, so it's much easier. And what I did was, I just tightened them where there's just the slightest of play. Let me... Uh, this one's gonna be easier to get to. You hear that little noise? I can rotate it by hand. Just the slightest of play. It's not a tilt, it's more of a back and forth. Left and right. That's about as tight as you're gonna want to get it so that it moves freely back and forth. So. Like I said, it's going to be the washer, my hand oriented, washer locking nut, and for the front, it's going to be the tensioner plate, washer and then locking nut. I'm going to have to put this, uh, I don't remember if it's called a captive nut, all the names are in the invoice he sends you after you buy it. Like you can see there, it's the plate, the washer, and the locking nut. And it's just the same thing, it's getting it where it just barely wiggles. This one's actually pretty tight. 
the I already told you the threads on those uh, the 3 8 bolts you have a hex size of 9 16 same thing for the nut I didn't get to uh, see how long this bolt is on over to 6 inch or 9 inch well, this is where you tighten it I'm probably gonna want to go get a washer this is from the socket it's just it's just better so a little tip that I would add push this to its maximum for this out for this in take a speed square and a straight pick and just run it down and mark it that way if you ever have to service it you know where it's furthest out and furthest in will be now when you tighten this bolt you'll pull the pump this way but when you loosen it it's not going to push it out so you're going to have to wiggle it back inwards Yeah, that's pretty much it for this portion of the video. Thanks for watching. Also, those mins and maximums, I marked them on all fours. That way, no matter what position the pressure washer's in on the trailer, I can see Where's the furthest I can get and where's the, the closest I can get it. And once I have the belt on there, I'll probably... Phone died. Now it's fully charged. But yeah, once I get the belt on there, uh, I'm tension it to uh, where I like. I still need to figure out how to know what's the best tension for it. I have an understanding for, you know, semi-trucks. Belt tension, but... Uh, I'll probably mark it again for whatever that, that belt tension is so I know for the future. Now you all see it all marked up and scuffed up. That's the way it came shipping. This right now is a plate from Rubbin. I thought about putting some marine grease on it, but I decided it's not going to be consistently moving back and forward. It may, you know, with the belt and the engine kind of like do a little rubbing shifting, but it ain't going to do much. Uh, like I said, I prefer a washer there, so I might end up going to Lowe's and buying one. But yeah, this is the first step. I need to go bring out the Predator motor. I also have a extended drain tube hose. Now, I don't know if you saw in the other video, but the stock oil drain plug on this has an O-ring. So I decided to add Teflon tape, just try not to have little strands. You don't want any of them to break off and then end up in here. Although it's it's lubricating as a pull, it's not really, you know, being pumped through or anything. It's just splashed. So I used the Teflon tape there, installed this portion first. Then put the Teflon tape on here, screwed it on. Before all of that, this came from the the people that put it together already with the tape I just tightened this down so I wouldn't uh, accidentally loosen it now the only thing is I don't think they lubricated this thing when they put it on cause look at all that play so yeah also I've mentioned in a previous video that these come uh, preloaded with oil so when I installed the drain tube I had to tilt this to where the oil would not leak out through the drain plug while I was replacing this. So far it seems it's okay, you know, for the short term to tilt it in angles you wouldn't think you, you could or can. But I mean the seals are good. You can see right now it's a little low. It does come at the red dot but because some of the oil is now in this tube it's a little low. I have some uh, Hyper Tough SAE 30 non-detergent oil 
somewhere over here in my business stash of the truck. So I'll fill it later. Remember, this is a shipping cap. You want to take that off before you start operating it. it. Comes with this orange cap that has a dipstick on it. And that's what you're going to want to use. And again, drain plug, it's got an O ring, which is why I decided to go ahead and put Teflon tape on there. Permatex medium thread locker. You can use Loctite or whatever you choose. Yeah, this is the pump. I don't know what kind of cameras everybody uses online. It makes these things look small, but I'm six foot three. Got a big hand. It's a big pump. It's about 12 inches. But yeah, I got these saw horses from Harbor Freight yesterday. A little discount, $10.99 each. I just put uh, these bolts that Russ sent. These are 3 8 dash 16 by one and a half um, I opted to go and buy a three and a half inch that way I can mount it through the board of the pressure washer and have the pucks the rubber feet pucks under here I just put the ones that Russ sent to hold it in place while I install everything on all four sides you could probably use these are 0.282 size holes so it's probably a quarter inch carriage bolt you could probably get some long enough that it goes through the the thickness of the plate here and through your boards of the trailer and you can use this as a securing points to keep it in place I just chose to do it with the feet I know it's gonna be difficult trying to put a and I'll go figure out what that loud noise was for now but um I'm, it's going to be difficult putting these through the holes so the trailer I'm just going to have to measure it out as good as I can and drop it with the bolts and everything in the feet because once I put the motor on here and even with just this, it's pretty heavy. The plate is probably close to 10 pounds. This is allegedly 40 pounds, but it feels like it's 60, but it's 40. The engine's supposed to be 103, I think. So all said and done, it's gonna be right under 200 pounds for the weight of this. But yeah, I got no phone stands or anything to hold my phone so I could record while I'm doing things so I'm pretty much gonna end up doing stuff and then just describing what I do bolt sizes but yeah I gotta drag out that heavy engine all the way over here it's about 30 40 feet and I think shipping weights like 120 pounds so we'll see how that goes and yeah I got a wheel jack stand dolly however you want to all these I gotta tell you these single axles are pretty useful for dollying stuff around so this is my 76 inch by 10 foot these kind of tanks really uh, take up some space but to help me move that the rest of the way from the porch over there. Very heavy engine. All right, cut the tape, cut the plastic bands off. Now, of course, I can't do this one-handed, so it'll be a little skip in the video. Warranty void if following maintenance is not performed. Every 20 hours, oil change, every 50, clean air filter. Every 100, replace spark plugs. That there for now. Go put it in my truck so it don't blow away. See if I can fix this up. Alright, and 
there she is. Alright, now for the two-handed part. And I got the plastic kind of pushed off to the side. Sounds like we have some tools here on the outside of the bag. Spark plug tool. Looks like something was over here, like O-rings. O-rings, some jets, some exhaust gaskets. I'm assuming this is a, yep, the high altitude kit. Uh, I'm over here in Edinburgh, so high altitude kit one, 3,000 to 6,000 feet. I think we're only like 90 feet above sea level 95. Spare parts for the exhaust gaskets, but don't need it. I got a Honda 670 pump to put in this fuel pump. I'm gonna take this oil uh, fuel filter out. I'm gonna see if I have a gasket that will fit nicely through here. Just have a hose hanging out. Recommended. Uh, Breaking time is running it for three hours. Let's see. This was made December of 2021. The date doesn't say anything. Oh no, that's the information for the emissions control. So it's probably older or younger. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll do the three hour breaking after I swap the fuel pump and I'll bolt it down to the the frame see how it works having the engine on on that I'm gonna change out the factory oil filter for a frame after the three hours I'll do an oil change again I need to add the extended oil drain tube Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I don't think there's anything else here to fall off. Alrighty. Alright, I'm gonna try something I saw on a YouTube short from a guy out of Austin. About five hours north of me. I use my toe straps. I have this roll around a few times so I get a good uh, grip and it doesn't unravel on me. Got a hooking point here and there, so just hook it up and lift it and hopefully it doesn't slip. Alright, get it out. Remember I'm six foot three, so kind of used the exhaust as leverage on my thigh and leaned it back out, wiggled it a little bit out of the box and got onto this bench. There's about five of these big Dissicant packets. I recommend saving those. Putting them in the toolbox of uh, whatever you're going to store your pressure washing stuff in. Help cut down the moisture and the rust. Probably like a quarter inch of plywood. Now I think both of these or drain bolts, that's one of them. This one's the second. If that is the case, so oh, look at that next one. And six. This is, I probably want to stick the other drain tube hose on this one. That way, I have one coming out of the middle, one out to the left side, so it's not in the way of each other. Maybe a little more free space here. Or maybe it is best to have both on the same. And we'll see where it goes. So, what I'm going to do is just take pictures of all these stickers and little informational flyers that I have for later on. Get it turned around, opened up, switch out the fuel pumps.
gas lines. Now, there's bubble wrap and zip tied right here. And the quarter key is right here, so make sure you don't lose it. And while you're uh, breaking it in, make sure you have it removed and off to the side where you won't lose it. That way it doesn't fly off when you turn it on. And that's their filter that I'm going to replace with a fram. And uh, just go from there. Looks like maybe some plugs for coolant lines or more oil. Yeah. Take those pictures and we'll see what I record next. Mounting bolts are going to be a 13 millimeter. Fit just right. No. Don't have access right now to the bolts underneath. But uh, I just assume they're also 13. You got it facing me. Now I kind of recommend putting some medium thread locker on these. In the older display models you see at Harbor Freight are missing these guys so you know they rattle out. So I'm only going to film some of this right here from uh, point to point. I need to go inside and grab the fuel pump replacement. Fuel pump is mounted to this. There are fuel lines. This one's a fuel line the intake. Huh. Looks like there's another fuel filter in there. Another screen. Let me see if I can. There we go. Get a little, there it is. That's also connected to it, so I don't know if that's like an air line or uh, that's the rest of the fuel line because I think this is a fuel line. Let me see, let's take it apart a little further. Let's, see, let's take the air filter housing off. Now I think if you're going to remove this air filter, you do have to remove that front face I just took off. Mm, yeah, you would because it goes over this. Let's see, it's an old camera. And they also like to focus, so stuff may be blur. So got a little washer here, rubber grommet. Remember that piece is down. Let's see, this almost seems like it's glued onto the filter, so we'll take it off together. It's a little hit up on that bracket. Let's see, don't see any number markings on here. I'll just remember this little flat spot was in the back. You got a little piece of plastic in here, a little bit of filter. Let's see, this is saying November. I don't see a spot for the year. Now I know for sure I'm gonna have to take off this face to get to it. Probably gonna have to take this off, which means I gotta take off these two screws. Gonna have to take this off because it's got the same bolt on this side. Uh, feeling around. Seems like that's the only one up there, and then it's just removing these little guys. Four of them. Let me see if I can determine their sizes right now. A little wobbly for a 10. I don't know if a 9 would be better. Let's see. 
I'm not going to use this, but just to gauge the size. Nine's too small. So maybe I can use SAE sizes. Let's try a 516, so I doubt it. Yep. Let's go two up. 716, too big. 3 8 Ooh, just so close. Maybe it is a 10. Just a lot of wiggle room there. Yeah. So yeah, it's these four. These. Other set of it. And then these two. I should take off this front cover. I don't know if this upper bracket is just slid in there or not. I might watch somebody else's video right now just to double check. I may or may not have to take this top part off, which is a Phillips Phillips two bolts. Let me see what these are. These are 10. Let's see. This one feels like a 10. Doubt it's a 3 8 because, you know, it's foreign, so. Just about everything should be metric on this. See it? Time for me to play with this, and uh, I'll throw in some info later. Well, it'll be in the next clip. Wow, oh, and don't expect a special key. It's kind of like a universal key for this thing. You got your choke, which I think is only three positions. So you got one click there, another click there, another click there. Maybe four in total. Two, three, four. Yeah, about four. Got your throttle. You got your uh, breaker down here. Breather hose. Oil fill cap. Oil cooler. Well, yeah, let's see what we do. Another thing, I would recommend putting thread locker on these when you put them back on. I think these also disappear on on guys in other videos so I used the 10 socket so now I just got these two here and the front cover should come off or I need to watch that other video we'll see all right got our two bolts off this one had a washer on it this one since it had the the lift plate here that's its own washer it looks like these Phillips are what are still holding on to it. Uh, other than that, bottom's loose. Um, see all around, so it's just these two Phillips, and maybe this should be it. Alright, I'm removing it from the bottom first. It does have tabs that go up into here on both ends, so... It is probably better just to remove that up there get all the space you can need but you can also do what I just did so. old finger cutter you got your uh, ignition coils there if you have a, a tachometer like the actual gauge tachometer this is where you'd get that ground signal from the coil if it's the right coil that will do what it's supposed to do all right so we'll move this off to the side maybe put our name on the inside of it 
for theft purposes. Let's see. This does look smaller than a 10, which it is. Let me see if one of my wrenches will tell me. Smaller than a 9. And that way I can pull out the quarter deep socket. Let's try an 8. Yeah, I'd say it's an 8. Let me see if I can break it loose. Yeah, it's a knuckle buster right here. Alright, we'll just use the deep socket. Needs to break loose some. Let's see. Looks like the fuel in. Let's see. Fuel in comes to the back coming through here I want to say this is the airline I want to say this is the output yeah it feels like it goes to a carburetor so I'm assuming this is probably like a sponge media just to prevent fuel from getting sucked in or yeah prevent fuel from getting sucked in you can see the figures of the sprocket there the flywheel those look pretty cool. I'm sure they'll rest at some point. That's a better view. There's your starter. Alright. Let me go get that quarter set. So we got the eight, mo eight millimeter bolt out. This up here was up inside this groove area. Back here, I guess it's just a noise dampener because it doesn't bolt to anything. Get your fuel line. It's got a little protection here. So now it's just to disconnect things so I can get this flipped over, see what bolts it is. Alright, so I could squeeze these with my fingers, but <clears throat> not wide enough open, use the pliers. Got them to move back and it's just a matter of getting them to twist loose from being on here. I did the air one off first and then the fuel inlet. I'll do the fuel outlet right now, but... Let's see what size that is. Probably a 10. More than likely. Yep. It's a 10. Another one. 10 here. And then go ahead and remove our factory fuel pump. Just nice that it's metal because the replacement is plastic, but I say it's better, so we'll see. Just something to add on this one. It's got a little arrow here pointing inward so that your fuel inlet here it's got an arrow pointing outward to your fuel outlet I'm assuming the P stands for pulse because it's a pulse pump so just something to add it's a little tough to uh, try and get this one to twist like the others because you have it in this grommet and then you have this metal piece that's wrapped around it so it doesn't quite exactly pull out. But just something to know. Alright, this one has proven tougher <clears throat> to get twisted. Kind of used the pliers and I didn't want to because I knew it would mar up. Maybe cut a hole into it. And there's kind of some stress in there where I removed it because it's not twisting with the pliers. So, I'm going to use a pick. I'll probably cut this piece off and use uh, this section. When I put it back, or I got plenty of quarter inch fuel line to run from here to the fuel tank, so I can do either or. Well, it's very tough, but you know what I just thought of and some of y'all might have caught on a little quicker than I did. Just unbolt this. Take it off. 
give you all the space in the world. Duh. Oh, also I squeezed it through. Took the grommet throughout. Yeah, just take it off with the 10 millimeters and uh, twist it. Duh. Well, I get, I got it off, but I gotta tell you, even free and open like this, it was still a pain in the ass. But yeah, now I got all these uh, markings and marns and uh, bad spots. So gotta cut that piece off. It's a light piece. So uh, probably thinly cast metal. So I'm gonna go get the new uh, Honda one, and I'll be back. All right, here's our Honda fuel pump. Now, I don't know if this assembly number matters, but what I used to find it was this 16700-Z0J-003. So should line up just right. Bolt it on, and uh, we'll continue from there. So got out of the packaging and it's the same thing. The indicators. Let's see. That's got an arrow pointing out. You got the letter P for pulse. And you got arrow pointing in for inlet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this marred part. I'm gonna install the outlet portion. Pretty much do the reverse of what I was doing. Yeah. Get the fire trucks going. We're starting to act like uh, big cities around here where every accident has a fire truck go to it now. So, we're gonna put thread lockers, thread locking fluid onto our pump mounting bolts. Make sure we don't uh, come undone. And then go ahead and put the tubing back. I already put it through the hole it's again. I cut off the little piece that was marred up, so there should be plenty of leftover to get me back into place over here. And, uh, we'll see you in a little bit. So we got our bolts in place. Give it the good German, good and tight. Just a little torque to it since we don't have torque specs on anything and now this is plastic and not metal. Gonna take a little niece break. My seven month old niece just arrived, so gonna go see her. All right, got our lines back on. Bolt back in, trimming good and tight. This piece back up in the, its little housing. Now, since I had to cut this short, it's kind of wanting to pop out, just fine. And then uh, <clears throat> as I was tightening this up, I remembered that I wanted to run a new longer line and get a different fuel filter on here. So this looks like it's connected to this bracket. So what I'll do, I don't need to take anything apart. I'll just take this line off, run it through, and have it coming out. I'm just extending out and uh, decide later where to cut it and where to hit the fuel filter. So I'll figure this out. Mm, I have to use a flathead. But we'll see what our course of attack would be here. It's not like I really need that piece, so if it breaks, eh, no problem. Alright, so I just used that same curve pick I was using earlier. Just to push in these tabs enough to get one through and then the other. Alright, now to add new line and uh, see if I need a grommet or not. Maybe I can use this little bracket. Cause this is going to go through a lot of vibrations, but I mean, I don't know, I'll see if one of the, those Harbor Freight grommet packets I got, there's a size that's good, but 
gotta back off and we'll run the new line. Alright, since this is a new quarter inch line, it's a little tight on the plastic and I really don't want to strain the plastic inlet. I'm trying to push it in, so what I did was at first <clears throat> with the inlet on this side I pushed the hose into this so it kind of loosened up a little for this opening, pulled it out, pushed it in and then got the clamp on there. So I ran it through its openings here to kind of like like bread ties of a, a mechanical world. We got another one here. Uh, I don't think this thing's going to be good anymore to hold the hose up in the hole here. So I'm going to see uh, if I have a grommet that fits. For sure it'll fit around this, but to fit around the front cover just so there's no rubbing and then fuel gets uh, leaking once a hole gets deep enough but this is definitely much thicker fuel line hose this one you get a I get at the Lowe's it's inner diameter quarter out of diameter half 10 foot long there's your uh, part number for Lowe's 98595 so I'm going to finish this up and I'll probably just uh, put everything back in reverse order, lock tight and uh, I'll be covered up probably the next time you see it unless I find something else that needs to be said. Uh, let me see. Let's see. It's, it's, it's a big difference. For sure but yeah we'll see you soon all right with the new thicker fuel line I do have the fuel line hidden up against this plastic piece so I'm gonna see if I can manipulate it just pushing it out more see if I get in a good position okay, so for the reassembly I'm just gonna take this off if you're gonna disassemble might as well just take it off from the beginning it's a 10 millimeter bolts. You got this top bracket and then this mesh bracket. This is where your air goes in for the carburetor. They weren't on there too tight. So now the only thing I have holding this is a, a breather hose and then me putting this back in. I did find a grommet that will fit. You kind of have to like mess with it to go around here it's from the harbor freight pack six seven five eight two i got the biggest one so i'm assuming it's the one inch yeah it's the one inch so we'll see how that works once uh i only tried it on here it looked nice we'll see how it fits around here all right i think this is going to cause a problem with vibration probably put a hole in it it's already right where it should be but uh I'm just gonna take my cutting pliers just nip some of that plastic so that there's clearance there all right so I just cut enough that there is clearance there that is as far back as this is gonna go into it so just enough just like that we're all put back together I'd say like new but it's a little more improved than new so we got a little grommet I took off this piece it, it wasn't sticking on anymore so just leave it with the old filter got a quarter inch line got some of it out Connect the fuel filter here, a little more line to shut off an off valve, a little more line, and into uh, a six gallon fuel tank that Russ sent you. You can get that one cheaper. No, actually, no. Russ's is cheaper, but you, if you ever need to buy another one, you can buy them at Academy. 
But yeah, it's just pretty much mounting it and figuring out where on the trailer I got space for this guy. So, next I'll uh, unbolt this and see if I can get it mounted on her skid back there. And quite a bit of tools, but I mean, it was pretty much 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter. And then uh, pliers, if you mess up, have to cut some line and cut your pliers, but it's about all the tools you needed. This definitely does help with the straps. It also helps having some height. And uh, we'll see how she goes from here. Not too bad to begin. Just make sure to uh, read all of these and take uh he's got bungees on take them off plug up the battery throw in some oil uh, switch the filter beforehand yeah we'll get her cranking soon enough now we're gonna put the fuel filter got this one from AutoZone it's been in my truck a little bit so it's been thrown around and it crushed up some don't remember how much this cost but that's the part number it's for quarter inch lines which is what I Add it on here. Got this one because this is a large capacity, so I'm hoping that uh, helps cut down on. Uh, ooh, Russia. Never mind. Anyways, uh, hope it uh, prevents it from uh, being starved for fuel. Just big old capacity. Got to point the arrow the right way. These I got from uh, Lowe's as well. They're in the pull-out drawers. This is a half inch size because it's a half inch outer diameter on these quarter inch inner diameter lines. It's just so you know. All right, got our fuel filter on now. Give us a little protection from any bugs crawling in now. Kinda just wanted to have this sticking on the outside just so that no matter what direction I put it in, it shouldn't be blocked up. Yeah, hopefully this works out. Pulls enough fuel to suck it on out. Now we'll have to get a smaller filter. AutoZone has filters about that size or smaller, a quarter inch. Or elsewhere. I don't think this one has a micron rating. I know there's other ones in AutoZone same brand and they'll say uh 40 or 60 microns it's a bit smaller of a filter but this having it this size this many pleats this big uh shouldn't be restrictive it should help out but yeah this is how they should send them i tell you all right once again we hooked up our ratchet strap after taking off our 13 millimeter nuts Lifted it just slightly to pull off our board here. And uh, let's see if this is as well. 13 mil. Ooh, that definitely is not a 13 millimeter. So let's see. These are sockets here to gauge. All right. So we're a 10 millimeter bolt, 13 millimeter nut with a washer. All right, so our next couple of moves is gonna be, uh, we'll do this after, but switch the oil filter with the frame I have. And then also parwash.com, I believe it is, out of Fort Worth. You're going to be using the same threads, which I believe is a 12 millimeter. Uh, it's going to be the same as the GX270 and the GX390. You're not going to use the same size as the 690. It's a different size on those. I don't remember how big those are. But we're going to take our elbow off. Probably gonna have to use thread locker because I believe there's a washer there, but there's nothing to 
hold the washer that the train bolt has. But I'll probably still leave the washer on here. I don't know. I'll decide afterwards. And then after that, we'll put our Teflon tape, PTFE tape, whichever one you want to use. And then uh, we'll tighten it up here. And we'll go ahead and tighten up this end. It's pre wrapped from uh, the factory in Florida. Same thing as with the general pump. I guess they didn't use lube to push these in, so got a little bit of a gap. So we're gonna put this hose on. We're gonna try to do it here on the left side. That way the hose is on this end, independent from this one. Probably safe from uh, draining the wrong one at the wrong time. Not that it'd be hard to tell who's who, but also, on this side, you don't have a lot of things. Whereas on this end, you have all the wiring, the oil pressure sensor, the starter, starter solenoid, the rectifier. So it'd probably be better if this is a viable side to go ahead and use this train bolt instead. And uh, for sure take all of this off, especially the key, prior to doing the break-in process. Let's see. I'll see if the wrench cap I have fits this and loosen it up. If not, I'll use the universal one to take it off. Yeah, slowly but surely, we're getting there. Just so you can see, it's one gallon jug. Got it in the corner. A little surprise right there on the floor just to so you all know there's a little shipping oil that comes in these it's uh, not enough to show up on the dipstick but it's enough that when you open the drain plug you'll have it leak out now there is stuff coming out on the oil I don't know if you saw that little piece that came out last like some little crud on there yeah we'll get this drained out till it pretty much stops so I can install the extension tube I don't think there's going to be a use for the washer it's a uh, 12 millimeter bolt and that's for both sides so it's got the bolt and the washer so I'll just wait for this to finish draining out and uh, maybe if I'm able to on my own tilt it a little then we'll uh, at the extension tube change the filter on here mount it up on the skid <coughs> and then uh, prep her with some oil and I think tomorrow we'll go ahead and do the break in it's getting a little later in the day I think it's about four or five I'm seeing some stuff come out with the oil we'll talk to you in a bit uh, I didn't get to record it for y'all but I just tilted it and uh, there was a big glob of something that just came out of there it might have been like a, a grease glob but highly recommend uh, trying to empty out as much of this oil as you can before uh, just so there's nothing that goes on with the oil pump so I'll see if I can capture it with the camera let's see oh, it moved on me let's see not that black stuff that's just the uh, dirt that's underneath let me zoom in so just tilted this engine until it slid on me so it's enough tilting Let's see if we can get it to focus so that right there and we 
wish it would focus. That right there. See, I think that's the reflection. I don't think that's the glob. Let's see where the camera is. I'm uh, trying to see if I can capture it. Okay, right there, there's like two pieces that are moving around. That's the glob I'm talking about that came out of it. So, definitely do drain the shipping oil. It's either grease or uh, oil that coagulated on its ship over, you know. So, save your oil pump. Alright, after a few failed attempts, <clears throat> decided not to put the PTFE tape on this. Because uh, each time I took it out, it pretty much just scrunched up to the washer. Or wasn't even there on the threads at all. That's not usually how you see it work. Um, so I just did, I added the washer. I straight tighten it. I wish it was 90 degrees more, but I don't want to push it and snap the brass fitting, especially since it's not something I can get locally in. And I don't want to have to try to get it out of that hole. Uh, I would definitely recommend the drains at hose as opposed to this. Because these are kind of like a makeshift in a way. It's like, hey, we can make them too, but, you know, that's, even though drains it are short, you know, it would just be the washer, and then, then the drains it has the actual threads on on the, the tubing. It's not like this, that I need an adapter, and then it's the tubing. Drains it has it straight on. <clears throat> so, if you consider this, I probably wouldn't go the pressure washer uh the power power wash store route i just ordered the drains it i don't know what you would have to do for that one that one's a it's a quarter inch thread but it's quarter inch bsp i would assume because it's italian and that's what all the other fittings are which quarter inch mpt will work it's just it won't thread as far in you can buy adapters which i have on the other things that I have that are BSP, including what I'm gonna have for the inlet and outlet of the water on that side. But I would say the drains it, even though it's shorter, probably be better. Um, maybe you could just buy another piece of hose, get a coupler and extend it some. That's the only reason why I didn't get the drains it, was because the drains it were only like 14 inches and I get an extra 10 inches from these that I can use. The good thing is that this one's gonna be on the outside. So I can just have it on the side of the skid. I don't think the back end will be blocked, so I'm not too concerned, but as far as fitment and uh, you know sealing to the best of its ability, I would think uh, it'd be better if the drains it hose. Just remember this one is gonna be similar threads to the Honda GX270 and the GX390. I don't remember the actual size. I think it's 10 millimeter. So I think drains it has a uh, 1012 and 1014. And the difference is just one, one tubing is quarter inch, which I think is a 1012. 1014 is the 3 8 inch tubing, which is what this is. And it's, it's essentially air hose. <clears throat> so uh, that's my m recommendation on these so whenever I fill this up we'll see if it leaks if it not if it doesn't it's great if it does we'll try to figure out some other way if not I may just put the the regular drain bolt over there 
and just drain it out from this side. That way it's on the side of the skid and just figure out how to deal with the mess. But hopefully this does work out. And I can't do it by hand. I could probably pry it with the hose a little. But um, we'll see how it goes with this. So next up is to uh, change the filter and try mounting it up. You got all the failed attempts right there on the tape. But yeah, like I said, make sure you drain out that chipping oil because, I mean, I would say there's definitely a glob of lube in there. It's like two pieces now are separated. But yeah, there's a lot of different mounting holes here. Probably for your smaller 420cc engines. I think this one is the one for the Predator. Now, my guess it's these two and maybe these two but I'll find out once I'm uh, underneath it here I have to figure out how I can well, shouldn't be too bad it's just gonna be the nuts on these side it's gonna be better to put the bolts that way if the bolts loosen up and fall off uh, if the nuts fall off you at least have the bolts to still keep it in place, which is the same thing I did over here. So uh, that's up next. Sure enough, we got her on. Just had my left hand here. I was in the front. Had my other hand kind of on the starter. I was moving and whatnot. Kind of just a big guess as to which bolt. I don't think I can reach that back one. No, because I can see the delay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an idea which holes they are. I guess. It's just a guess. There's kind of a better view of those two globs I was talking about that fell out. It's that one and that one there, and I think there may be see, that's a little floaty there. So yeah, there is a little sign. Alright, it's next morning. We got our Harbor Freight Universal Wrench pliers there. Took off the old one because my uh, oil filter wrench cap didn't fit it, but it will fit the frame later on. Off of the manu manual, <clears throat> I believe it says PH4967. I prefer the extra guard, although now I think they're just calling them uh, ultra synthetic. But the extra guard 4967 is what I'm going to be using for the three hour break in and then I'll change the oil again and uh, put another one I'm using mobile one maybe commercial uh, controversial for some but there's literature out there that it's more than okay and I've done it to my own truck mobile one high mileage advanced full synthetic we're going to be using 10w30 So, get the oil filter changed now, so I'll, now I can actually start filling the oil. Get your fill cap here. Got your little dipstick in the back. Go ahead and fill it to that second line right there. I believe it's two quarts. Now, like I had said, that uh, you should empty out whatever it comes with. It says it comes with 300 milliliters and to only add 1500. But since I emptied all that, or most of it, and all of y'all should as well, because like I said, there was like uh, globs of grease in it. 
and I'll be adding the full 1800 milliliters, which I think is about two quarts. I'll double check right now and uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, just re looked at the manual download I have. It does come with the manual itself. It is two quarts of uh, 1030, 10W30. If you're going to be in climates of uh, 32 and above. If you're going to be below that, it's going to be uh, 5W30. And if you're going to be in the upper portion of the hundreds, you can also use SAE30. But not the same one as the pump. Alright, we got our mostly two quarts in. Got a five quart jug. Right around the three mark. So... We'll see where that lands in a little bit, let it settle. Alright, so uh, you need less than two quarts. So I'd say probably fill about one and a half. And then just start letting it settle and checking. Uh, so right now I'm dumping just a little bit of oil at a time. Just fine. Now what I did, and I would recommend you all do... Let's see. You see all those scratches on there? I added those with like the tip of my knife. You could do it with a pick. Just add yourself some like uh, some of this cross hatching. That way, it lets the the oil stick onto it better, and you can better see what oil level you have. Because it's completely smooth, and it's a little harder to see. It's a little harder for the oil to land on it. But yeah, just add those little marks. That way it helps you out. I mean, most automotive vehicles have it. That cross hatching, but these don't. So that's a little tip. Also on these drain hoses, the cap's an 11 sixteenths, and the nut on the barb is a 9 sixteenths. Right, so, we'll just leave it slightly above the fill line. We're going to put our cable on our starter. This is a half inch nut, which I'm surprised. Given that just about all this should be metric. Let's see. Okay, that's that. I guess we'll just put our wire. In between that eyelet and uh, let's see, go ahead and put this through. Lovely. So yesterday. I was messing with the the many bolt hole positions for this motor. I'll show you here in a little bit which one I believe is the correct one based off of uh, how the shafts kind of line up. I don't know if this will throw you all off upside down. This seems to be the right lineup. Now, just describing it, um, there's like a set of three in a row, or they're in line. And it seems to go on that, in the front end of this plate, it seems to go in that first line. Good and tough. So we got a positive cable now. Let's 
for there. You have the three in a row on that one. And that one it goes on the first one. On this one, uh, this one's the back one. I could have sworn there was also three in a row, but I guess there was only two. Let's see, where's the other one? Oh yeah, there is three. It's just one. It goes in the second hole. So once we get to the point where we put the pulleys on, uh, then uh, we'll know if we're lined up right. So on this back right corner, because that's the front of the motor, it looks like this one goes on the second one. You can see that back hole is a little open. That one's going to go in the front, the front, and the middle of the three. That should be our lineup, but I mean, we're very tight on space. I have the pump pushed out a little because it does come up into the wiring of the motor. But uh, alright, on to the next thing. Let's see. I guess it would be kind of uh, plumbing the fuel tank to our filter. I'm definitely gonna have to figure out this ground. It has been said to uh, put it on these bolts, but I mean, there really isn't much threads left. It might work. I'll probably just stick it on this one on this side and that on that side. That way, you have the negative through the whole motor, which I mean, you still will, but just to feel better about it, I guess. Because I could just do from this one, be closer, and yeah, it'll all be grounded. I don't know, I'll, I'll see, I'll probably just put it on this one over here. Alright, so I did put it on this one. There is just enough threads. Yeah. Just enough threads to do a little more. So that's good. I had to loosen up all the bolts to get this bolt to come up. So now we're all connected. I ran through this, also, this little grommet comes with the plate from Russ. South side equipment. So now we got our wires there. What's next? Just got to run our uh, fuel lines, fill up our six gallon tank. I have some ethanol free gas there that cost way too much because it's uh, 90 octane and that's all that station nearby had. It was like uh, 437 a gallon. So yeah, I put 20 bucks and that almost filled up most of it. I think I needed like another 2 bucks or something. Or maybe I put 30 bucks, I don't remember. So that's 5 gallon tank. The tank you buy from Rust. From Rust uh, <clears throat> is the uh, 6 gallon tank, so that'll fill most of it. We've got to run a 3 hour no load break in. We'll, uh, each hour we'll up the RPM so yeah next I'll go get that fuel tank and uh, go from there all right we got our fuel line hooked up got our shut off valve sometimes these leak so I don't know if this uh, I'd recommend yet they do sell metal ones on Amazon. <clears throat> this is a six gallon tank you get from Russ. Like you've seen in other videos, I added a vacuum gauge. See if that helps me uh, determine if I need a new fuel pump or filter. Kind of like a way to gauge it. We'll see if that leaks. This isn't the permanent length. Unless that is the actual length I need on the trailer. 
it's uh, just to test it for now. We'll try to get it on an even plane. I'll probably coil that up. But yeah, it's just uh, adding the gas to this, hooking up the battery terminals. We've got our uh, 29, I think, DC marine grade battery that our softwash stuff's gonna run off of. I'm debating whether I should uh, turn this thing on on plastic jack stands with all the vibration it may have or uh, put it on the bench see how it uh, works out so we'll see very soon and uh, I'd like to add from this point on once you have both items on the skid plate that any carrying of that should now be done by two people you can do most of it like I have done with uh, one person by yourself but uh, after this for sure two people uh, if you can't do it one person beforehand always two people especially with lifting that motor that's the heaviest thing I am gonna get an hour meter to put on this thing gotta wrap it around the coils there's just so many bad reviews with all of them it's just hard to actually pick one you got some that work off of induction with you wrapping a coil around the spark plug there's some that work off of the vibration of the motor which I think depending how that works it may be skewed with you know being on the trailer or truck vibrating you have some that uh run off the on switch so when you have it on even if the the engine isn't on it'll start clocking time on it uh vegas go-kart used to have one on their side although it's been sold out all this time but now it's no longer listed and theirs was a tachometer that had an hour meter on it and i think it probably worked off the same principle of having the the engine on um but instead of wrapping around the coil, it actually plugged into the ground of the the coil packs. Yeah, we'll see uh, how I do this startup. Alright, we filled it up most of the way. I think it was 4.567 gallons. I know it came out that way. Got one of these Midwest cans. This portion slides in and out. Fuel does come out of there, so be mindful of your hands. You gotta push down here before it starts. This goes up against the lip. So yeah, this is a six gallon tank. This is about four and a half gallons of gas. It's right about where it reads, that yellow line. It didn't get off of empty until I'm probably like two, two and a half gallons. So if it reads empty, you might have two and a two and a half gallons of fuel in there so go ahead and close this up I believe it clicks as well I think there was two clicks there this right here if you see in my other video this is the venting transporting have it closed righty tidy when you're gonna use it lefty loosey until it's open this one was modified so that it actually does relieve air pressure that may be stuck in there. This little tab may catch, may not. Let's see. This one's a little modified. It comes to like a like a little triangle and closes. And honestly, that design, which I've seen on semi trucks to relieve air but in the opposite direction. The way it's installed here, I wouldn't call it proper at all. So I'm not gonna run it just yet, so I'll leave this closed. Our fuel valve here, our shutoff valve. We'll leave it closed. Next to connect the, the battery terminals. All right, if you get any of these batteries from Walmart, this is the Max 29 DC. It's their marine grade. I like that they put the serial number on the battery. I just recently bought a battery for my aunt. And uh, 
those AutoZone batteries and uh, O'Reilly's batteries don't have serial numbers on it. So I think they just want to be uh, ignorant of uh, any warranties later on by not having the serial number. Anyways, the two uh, nuts that come with it, they'll be on the positive post cover. These are 14 millimeter nuts. So I'll go ahead and get that installed. All right, we got them installed. These things have a 304 number on them, so I'm assuming those nuts are stainless. All right. I have uh, charged this battery fully. I did add some distilled water to them because, you know, they're not always filled all the way. So we'll go over, go ahead and cover this for now. No accidental contacts. Make sure your wrench doesn't touch positive and negative. So now, should have her voltage. I'm just gonna verify with my multimeter. Touch the, the negative and ground. Make sure we come out to, uh, I think it was like 12.6 or 12.8 that this battery is fully charged. So we'll come back and uh, show you trying to crank it. All right, we had our 12.58 volts on our uh, leads over there. I'll go ahead and open up our valve here. Look at that, those are already starting to inflate. You can already feel that it's hard. The only reason why it's letting out air right now is because I did that cut. So let's go ahead and turn on our fuel line. Put up these little yellow tabs just in case. Hopefully, these plastic saw horses can handle vibration. I'll probably just move this battery down. And, uh, no, I don't think we'll reach. All right. So I'm gonna cut off here. I'm gonna. Let's see. Heard a click. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a timer on my phone. Just heard it's turning, which is good. Just gotta get fuel to the pump. And we'll see how things go from here. All right. After three or four turns. Our filter is fuel, full of fuel. See, we got a little bit of a reading on our vacuum gauge. So this next turnaround, we'll probably turn it on. So I'd say about six or seventh crank. Got it. Like I said, make sure your uh, quarter key is not on there. But we got it pumping right now, it's at idle. You can feel some air through here. I don't know where that air is coming from. It's definitely hot coming out of the exhaust. You got a little wobble in the legs. But it's not vibrating too much. I don't see it moving back. So that's good. Remember, three hour break in, no load. I wouldn't even put a pulley on there. We had our choke pulled all the way out. Like I said about this, it was probably like the seventh or eighth crank. The seventh almost got it, the eighth did it. We got a little bit of a reading on the vacuum gauge. Probably like what? Uh, one or two. Maybe one. 
Now our fuel filter was filled all the way when priming, but now that's where about it's sitting. I figured out where the wind was coming from. It's that front fan. It's just blowing it through the motor. Makes the air going through pretty, feels pretty cool. So starting voltage was a 12.58 and charging voltage is a 12.78. So you get a little bit of charging power from the motor. Just in case anybody was wondering. So right now I'm questioning this uh, larger fuel filter. Because look how far the level has gone down. There's definitely some air bubbles coming through. I can only imagine once I up the RPM. So I might have to go with the smaller filter. I'll probably... If it shuts off, I'll probably have to use the, the factory one and go out later to get a, a smaller size filter. But so far, no leaks, no hiccups. Just only that fuel filter that's got me a little uh, concerned, but it's still pulling fuel through.